Welcome and thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Sitecore Water Cooler Podcast, the casual conversation podcast dedicated to covering all things related to Sitecore product updates, full site builds, suggestions and insights, getting the most out of your Sitecore investment, and more. I'm your host, John Price, Global Sitecore and Covail Practice Director and MVP at AmericanEagle.com. I'm very excited for today's episode as, as I am joined by a few colleagues from one of the best software companies around, Coveo. For many years, Coveo has been, leading, has been a leading search and insights engine for platforms such as Sitecore. Lately, Coveo has expanded its footprint and capabilities and use cases, a few being case resolution for self-service portals, integrating with chatbot providers, and helping e-commerce customers drive more sales. Today, we're going to learn more on what Coveo has been up to for the past year and what is in store for 2022. From Coveo, I'm joined at the water cooler by Anthony Dumas and Paul Sheridan. I've had the honor of working and collaborating with both Anthony and Paul for the past five years on many engagements. Anthony is a seasoned account executive who spends his time helping clients find the right solution for their digital experience. And Paul is an, is an experienced sales engineer sparking innovative ideas on how clients can best implement Coveo. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, John. Great to be here. So guys, you know, over the past year has been a very exciting time for Coveo, ranging from acquisitions to even going public. Anthony, let's kick off today by telling us a little bit about the recent acquisition of Qubit in 2021. Yeah, sure thing. And it, it was in the, the for us a big, uh, big acquisition and big, big and busy years indeed. Uh, Qubit uh, uh, joined the Coveo family uh, late, late last year, and it really was for us a strategic move in, in kind of a, uh, adding some some functionality to our commerce offering as we really want to expand into the B2C vertical. A Qubit had a lot of high-end clients, uh, many luxury brands such as Louis Vuitton and some of these uh, brands known globally. Uh, but for us, it really was uh, another way to also solidify our presence in, in Europe and Middle East uh, as they had a much stronger presence out there. I think it'd be good for the audience today to to kind of uh, uh, expand a little bit on to what Qubit does. And now it's Qubit and Coveo as we're slowly but surely integrating the product into our, our old product stack. So uh, it really is a... a commerce focused product that will equip merchandising team to really shape the, the shopper journey from personalizing search where Covio stands to product and content recommendation along with detecting shopper intent and determining the best context for that user at that given time. So Qubit and Covio were complementary to each other and as we're embedding this product stack into Covio, we really feel that will provide a whole stack of functionality for our e-commerce client in the B2C vertical mainly. And if I can just uh, add to that, it's been interesting talking to some of our uh, new colleagues uh, from Qubit about uh, how uh, search was, was not the biggest focus of, of what they provided. It's, it was around merchandising uh, and um, tagging products uh, based on availability. So they, they'd been looking into how do we improve e-commerce search. And clearly e-commerce search is something that we've been working on heavily for the last year or two. But, where, but where, where we perhaps had some gaps was around the merchandising side. So it's been very complementary. Uh, clearly, of course, there's the, the challenges of integrating uh, two, two disparate platforms, but uh, we're moving forward very strongly with that, um, with the goal of providing a better experience to our, our specifically B2C commerce uh, customers, as Anthony mentioned. And, and they really brought another kind of a sphere of expertise around mm -hmm. e-commerce while we've kind of pushed and been working actively into those digital replatforming and transformation. E-commerce is the own animal by itself. So we're quite excited about the depth of expertise and background that we brought in with the folks from Qubit. Yeah, yeah, if you think about commerce search, uh, it, it does have different flavors than simple website search or corporate internet search or self-service. Questions of availability of product, um, w whether you're dealing with a brick and mortar store or a chain of brick and mortar stores, how available is what you're looking for close to where you are, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Many different factors that come into play here, uh, which uh, I think the combined capabilities of Qubit and Caveo uh, provide um, a great solution for. Yeah, it's great to see, especially with Coveo's focus on e-commerce the past few years. It seems like a really good fit, kind of brings that entire e-commerce 360 degree experience all together. So it's really exciting to see, and I'm sure uh, we're going to see a lot of exciting developments with that acquisition as well throughout the year. So great insight, guys. Um, and the, the acquisition comes at an interesting time because it's also a very similar time to when you guys recently launched going public on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Is there anything else that you can give us insights um, about Coveo's uh, decision to do that as well? That was exciting, though, and talking about exciting news, I mean, Paul and I have been around for some time, and we see the the really quick and fast growth that Coveo has been uh, 
has been undertaking and obviously it's a big milestone for all of us uh, so yeah we we went public on the tsx the toronto stock exchange uh, and it's not a big fee it's a big feat actually of raising 250 million uh, so so we really see that uh, and based on, on several discussions going to fuel our growth this is a competitive market, right? We know there's a lot of competition. There's new players coming in the field. So we want to speed up, speed up innovation. We want to make sure that our, our R&D teams are, are well empowered and well funded to support the growth. And for us on the commercial side, this was also quite helpful in the overall brand awareness and making sure that the Kugel brand is recognized out there globally. So no, we're quite excited. And we, we did celebrate the, uh, as it was a big, a big achievement for all of us. Yeah, that's one major advantage Coveo has had for quite some time is kind of your R&D, being able to churn out new features and really penetrate new markets and use cases. So definitely can see this being a, a, even a bigger advantage uh, for you guys to continue to do that and really evolve the product in a positive way. So that's really great to see. You know, and, and I, even on that topic, we can even change gears here a little bit because, you know, we've been talking a little bit about how the platform has evolved over the, you know, the past handful of years from really kind of a search platform to more of an industry you know, insights and leading machine learning engine, you know, and then we've also been talking a little bit about how you guys have had a bit of a focus on e-commerce. So, Paul, let's dive into, you know, what are some other recent um, and even future focuses of Coveo from a features and capabilities perspective that, you know, you guys have recent, re- recently released and what we can expect here um, in 2022? Yeah, happy to discuss with you. Um, so, over the last, I guess I would say five years, uh, Caveo has um, really looked at machine learning as a way of enhancing what I often say are traditional search techniques, uh, keyword search and such. Uh, a focus on relevance, absolutely, and ability to, to tune uh, relevance of results based on rules, perhaps, that administrators create. But what we've done over the last five years with machine learning is to start to learn from user behavior as we moved to the cloud. Uh, we gathered a lot more information about what users are searching for. Did they find what they're looking for? What do they click on? What do they do next? So initially, we took that usage analytics information, built machine learning models uh, around it in order to very specifically improve and automatically enhance um, the relevance of what's being returned, to promote more or less, let's say, popular content for particular queries, to make type ahead query suggestions, self-learning and more effective. Uh, but one of the models that we uh, brought out in the last year or so, uh, we refer to as smart snippets or sometimes question answering. And this is a little different um, in terms of the, the approach. We're not really just learning from usage analytics statistics anymore, but also learning from the content that people are publishing in order to be able to provide a user experience, kind of like the Google um, answer box uh, features that we're all very familiar with from google.com, but of course related to what's published on our customers' websites. So in addition to simply providing search results that you can click on, here's a little snippet uh, of a document that contains quite likely the, um, the content that you're, mo- that, that, that you're looking for based on the queries that you've been, you've been running. So it relies a bit on the structure of the documents being provided, but provides a, a very familiar, comfortable, useful, hopefully, user experience in conjunction with uh, the relevance tuning and such, whether it's automatic or rules-based. So that's the smart snippets model. It's been quite an exciting um, enhancement. From more of a sort of uh, infrastructure point of view, um, we're providing now uh, headless APIs, uh, as well as our JavaScript uh, framework and the REST APIs that those are based on. So headless APIs enabling our partners, uh, such as American Eagle, of course, uh, to build really very custom um, mobile or um, web-based applications based on a, a headless framework integrating with react.js or view.js or, wh- or whatever sort of framework makes sense. So it does take a little more work from a development point of view, of course, you're, you're building based on APIs. We're not providing the, um, the user experience components uh, as part of that headless API, but it does fit really nicely into a direction that a lot of content management platforms are, are moving towards with headless. Um, I would say two other uh, areas to, to, to mention, in addition to our very mature uh, Sitecore integration. Uh, we've done a lot of work in the last year to also integrate with Adobe Experience Manager in a very similar model, the idea being that there's a, a module deployed into uh, AEM uh, that enables you to, that enables an AEM administrator to publish content from particular parts of the site or particular parts of the uh, digital asset management platform within AEM uh, to uh, index that content, index the metadata uh, appropriately as the content's published, and to then 
integrate the youth, the search user experience into ATM, but of course also including content from elsewhere. So that's a key Caveo capability over the years. Uh, we can index content from many different sources, uh, your content management system, your YouTube channel, your blogs, uh, your product catalog in the commerce uh, world. Uh, and then finally, again, from an infrastructure point of view, what we've done is we've taken our uh, usage analytics database, where we're storing user behavior, what they search for, what they click on and such, uh, into Snowflake as a, a, a very scalable database um, platform. Uh, so this <coughs> enables our customers to potentially use tools like Tableau, tools like uh, Microsoft Power BI as their reporting platform. And also, if they are already also Snowflake uh, users, they can merge effectively the Kaveo Usage Analytics database with their own data warehouse as well. So rather a long-winded description of <laughs> features and functions. I hope that's okay. Um, yeah, the, the recent Snowflake developments have been particularly exciting, especially from the analytics point of view. I mean, when users commit to a product like Coveo, there's always things like, hey, you know, the, the out-of-the-box reports are great, but there's always that need to add their own data on top of it or simply br break out their own reporting. So the Snowflake um, partnership is great to see. For those that don't know anything, that don't know a lot about Snowflake, it's another exciting up-and-coming uh, publicly traded company. So it's great to see you guys establish that partnership. Um, and then you mentioned headless. This is a really interesting topic, right? So I think you know headless is a bit of the wave of the future. And you know you mentioned it may take a little bit more development, but it really just gives end users and developers and organizations the ability to build whatever they want. So basically, build whatever type of search interfaces. So and it also helps with you know front end page performance, etc. So the headless libraries, the JavaScript libraries, are extremely exciting to see um, to really give you know organizations and developers kind of the aut autonomy to build whatever they'd like. Then you mentioned the snippets as well, Paul. The one thing I do want to mention that I think a lot of Coveo, even existing Coveo customers don't know a lot about is Coveo's page tracker. So the snippets is a great way to provide insight, but Coveo also offers a page tracker. It's been around for a little while, but gives that other dimension of being able to track pages and clicks even outside of search pages. So, you know, you guys continue to expand, you know, not just the analytics offering, but just ways to feed um, your machine learning engines as well to give it more data for even more relevant results. So all great developments, all ex very exciting to see. And on that note, you know, so, some listeners may be wondering, um, you know, these are all great features, but what are some key differentiators that Coveo has over some of your competitors? Great. And, and perhaps I can uh, shed a bit of color on this. And, and I think some of those will kind of... Uh, tied into some, <clears throat> the functionality that Paul was mentioning before. But over time, Kavu has been arguing that uh, you, you do have data that are, that are segregated in different use cases and system. And, and we've built over the year the portfolio uh, of the uh, connector that gives us the ability to bridge this content into our cloud index. So we, we've built uh, native integration into different key uh, systems, such as Sidecar, uh, such as Adobe AM, Salesforce ServiceNow. But we've expanded the footprint of those connector into both cloud on-premise structure and unstructured data. So that ability to leave that information where it is and leverage or a connector and integration into the Kavio Cloud Index is one of the thing, uh, key element differentiating our, our proposal. This Cloud Index is a proprietary technology uh, and it really is a multi-tenant index uh, that can scale to kind of astronomical uh, <laughs> size. So we have very large global corporation using Kaviwa across different use cases and vertical, and, and the index has been scaling uh, flawlessly along the way with them. So definitely something that uh, gives us some some uh, some differentiator here. But I think what I often say when I have those discussion is when you think about Kavu, it really is that out of the box platform that comes with pre-built components such as the index, such as the analytics, such as the connector, such as the machine learning functionality that you can easily assemble and plug in to kind of democratize a great a Google grade as we call it search experience and this is really where we stand and I think there's one uh, one element that we often bring up into those discussion is that Covio is the framework to scale with and we've had clients in the past that approach us and just wanted to say, I want search. Well, we will do excellent search and we'll give you added benefit. So sometimes we may have functionality that are a bit overkill for these clients, but for for some of those that are serious and really want to scale, this is where we, we can definitely differentiate ourselves. So lots of talking and uh, I'm not sure, Paul, if there's anything you'd like to add on that, but uh, I think it's a good recap. 
Yeah, perhaps just to complement what you were saying, I think there's always a balance between uh, out-of-the-box capabilities and a, a need to um, configure or even customize uh, how relevance works, how search works. Uh, and I think we strike a good balance there. Um, there are certainly, I think, very good, uh, more toolkit-oriented uh, search solutions out there, but they do require a lot more work in order to, to get something relatively simple up and running. Uh, we provide as Anthony was saying, um, almost out of the box uh, capability from that point of view, especially with regard to integrations to Sitecore. But we also do provide that flexibility for our partners, American Eagle, for example, especially, uh, in order to really tailor um, tailor this solution to the needs of different customers and, and quite different use cases, whether they're medical organizations, whether they're law firms, whether they're corporate intranets, whether it's a self-service or a commerce solution. There, there are lots of capabilities there that can enable uh, a qualified partner or even a customer uh, to tailor um, Kaleo's relevant solution to suit their use case or multiple use cases, uh, not uncommonly. Even from my perspective of having worked with Coveo and other providers, I think the even to wrap it up even at a higher level is Coveo does provide that total package, right? You do have prepackaged connectors, you have the cloud index, and then you have the autonomy to basically build whatever you'd like. So from a business perspective and from an agility perspective, that's incredibly important. And then when you layer on the search interfaces, the machine learning capabilities, your analytics engines, and now where you've gone with Snowflake, and e-commerce and merchandising, I really can't think of another, another provider that provides best of breed in each of those categories. So it's definitely an impressive kind of all-in-one package that you guys can offer, but you do offer the flexibility to let uh, customers choose what they need out of the platform. You're not shoehorning them into each one. Customers can choose bits and pieces if they want, which kind of feeds in that entire um, argument, which is now composable. So um, it's impressive what Coveo has really gathered up over the past few years and has really created that, what I'll call that total package of an offering. And one thing I do like to touch base on these episodes are specifics, right? You know, what are customers doing with your products today? So, Paul, you know, do you have any recent examples or projects that you know or have been of, of particular interest as of late? Maybe even feeding into some latest trends. Yeah, um, quite a few. Um, a couple of interesting projects I've been involved in recently have been focused on uh, corporate intranet solutions. Um, so bringing it together, as you can imagine, multiple different sources of information, certainly uh, content management systems, in some cases, uh, internet portal frameworks as well. There are a number of different platforms out there that uh, that provide that tailorabil tailorability, if that's even a word, uh, for an intranet framework, but still you know, leveraging multiple different content sources, whether it's SharePoint Online, whether it's a Sitecore, whether it's Adobe Experience Manager, uh, ERP systems, HR systems, and so on. And what's been interesting in that area is that need to personalize content, <clears throat> perhaps based on the location of a, an employee, uh, perhaps based on their role, um, and bringing together kind of rules-based personalization, often self-declared interests or roles, but also uh, leveraging, again, machine learning to say, well, other people like you who've searched for such and such a subject, they found this content to be most useful. Uh, so the Kaveo's capabilities there, again, across multiple different content sources have been really interesting to, to apply. Um, very large uh, customer, primarily headquartered in Europe, but quite global, has just recently gone live with us for their corporate internet, integrating into, uh, let's say, some rather unusual um, user interface uh, options. Um, can't get into the, uh, the the name of the customer right now because they, uh, they prefer to be private, but they're... Um, they're going to go live to about 30,000 uh, of their employees uh, globally. And that's been really an interesting one to work on. And there's a couple others that are quite similar that I've been personally involved in. Um, in addition to, of course, uh, you know, our, our more or less bread and butter of uh, more public websites and portals and, and service integrations. Uh, I think the emphasis on uh, upgrading the corporate intranet has been a really interesting trend this year. Yeah, it's actually a topic I spoke with one of your colleagues on last year out of episode JC, where the one I, one trend we identified is this entire move with COVID at, and accelerating kind of the whole model of self-service portals, company intranets, just so you can expand that type of communication around the globe. And we've had a few recent interesting projects here at American Eagle working with one of the largest airlines in the world. They use Coveo for basically reaching about 80,000 employees around the globe. Then also one of the lar largest mortgagers tr uh, pushing out content and very complex you know, financial content to tens of thousands 
of users. So I think Coveo is a fantastic tool for that intranet and portal use case where you guys can refine results based off maybe a logged in user's role within an organization, their location, and other types of attributes. So definitely definitely a trend we've been seeing and definitely a great uh, use case uh, that Coveo excels at. All right, Anthony and Paul, I think this is a great stopping point for today's episode as we've covered a plethora of topics today that I'm sure the audience has appreciated. Um, I greatly appreciate both of your times today and for swinging by the Cycle Water Cooler to discuss your experiences, and we hope to have you both on again soon. Thanks for having us, John. Great time. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, John. Thanks again to Anthony Dumas and Paul Sheridan from Coveo for joining us today on the Sitecore Water Cooler Podcast, a casual conversation between colleagues and peers centered around all things Sitecore. I'm your host, John Price, and until next time we meet at the Water Cooler, be sure to subscribe to the Sitecore Water Cooler Podcast today, wherever you find your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by AmericanEagle.com Studios, with special thanks to executive producers Renee Nelson, Julia Klepich, and Demita Menezes.